So you did it. You brought home your first electric car, and that feeling is incredible. The silent takeoff, the instant talk, the idea of waving goodbye to petrol stations forever. It's great, but then you're left standing in your drive or garage holding a charging cable, and it suddenly hits you. The confusing, intimidating world of home charging. You've probably heard jargon like level one, level two, kilowatts, amps, volts, and you've probably seen pound signs flashing in your mind. But the best, safest, and cheapest charging solution is probably already in your boot. And getting set up could cost you absolutely nothing and take as long as five seconds. As an EV owner, I started out exactly how you are, feeling that exact mix of excitement and confusion. I'm going to show you how to get this right, stress-free, starting now. I'm Dave. Don't make the same mistakes most EV drivers make. All right, first things first. Let's bust the biggest myth in EV ownership that you immediately need a fancy, expensive, professionally installed wall-mounted charger costing more than a grand. It's a total myth, and it's costing new owners a fortune. The best home charger for about 75% of EV motorists is usually supplied free of charge in a neat bag or box in your boot. For a huge number of drivers, that's all they'll ever need. This is your level one charger. It's the charging cable that most EV manufacturers throw in for free. And if the manufacturer gives it to you, even if it's free, then it's both safe and operational. It works. One end has a big funny round plug that fits perfectly in your car socket behind that charger flap. On the other hand, that end has a standard 13 amp plug that goes into a totally normal 230 volt 13 amp socket. Yep, the same one you use for your phone charger, your kettle or your TV. No electrician needed, no installation, zero extra cost. You already own the socket and the car usually comes with the free plug. What could be simpler? Now, you're probably thinking, hold on, isn't this incredibly slow? Yes, it is. But if you're an average person, you'll probably sleep around seven hours a night. And if you're an average motorist in the UK, you drive about 17 miles a day and less than 100 miles at the weekend. There is easily more than enough time to top your battery back up while you sleep. Lesson number one, you don't have to stand over it waiting for it to finish. It's not a petrol pump where you have to hold the nozzle all the time you're filling up. The secret with an EV is to treat it just like your mobile phone, plug it in each night and disconnect it in the morning. Ha, simple. Now, if you want to get technical, these are called Type 1 chargers and they're rated at up to 3 kilowatts. And you can expect to add somewhere between 3 and 5 miles of range to your battery for every hour it's plugged in. That sounds agonisingly slow, but divide that 17 miles by, say, 4 miles an hour average, and you only need to have it plugged in for less than 5 hours and it's full. You sleep for seven, so there's no rush. But that, of course, ignores the time you're at home awake, but not using a car. Say from six in the evening to eight o'clock the next morning when you set off for work. That's 14 hours, say an average of four miles per hour. That's 56 miles added every night. So here's a bit of homework for you. Just for one week, just note down how many miles you actually drive each day. Now, if it's consistently under about 50 miles, then the free charger you already have will almost certainly do the job for you. You plug in when you get home and you wake up every single morning with a full tank battery, all without spending an extra penny on fancy chargers. OK, so you're using the free charge and save you a ton of money compared to previously buying petrol, but just plugging it in whenever isn't always the smartest way to do it. Tip two is how you can save even more money by being a little strategic. So your standard variable rate electricity tariff will be costing around about 28 pence per unit. No need to get confused about what the units are, just 28 pence per unit. You pay around 28 pence and in a modern EV, you can drive for about four miles on that one unit. Even the worst of you at maths will be able to calculate that each mile you drive 
costs you about 7p. It's really simple. Now, for comparison, the petrol car you used to drive, which gave you around about 40 miles a gallon, that cost you £1.30 per litre, and that would have cost, been costing you 14 pence for every mile you drove. Hey, that's double, and it hasn't cost me any money for a fancy charger. This is half price motoring. Now you begin to see why people say EVs are cheaper. They are. But there are cheaper tariffs about, and your own existing utility company will also have one. They all do. If you have an EV, your utility company will have a cheap overnight EV rate specifically for charging your car cheaper. The secret to really cheap home charging isn't your home charger, it's when you're charging. You need to work smarter, not harder. So the solution is something called scheduled charging. You, your car or your app on the phone that connects to it has a secret you need to use. It lets you tell your car exactly when to start and stop using your electricity. And that's a game changer for even cheaper motoring, off-peak electricity rates. Think of it like happy hour for electricity. Most utility companies, British Gas, Eon, EDF, Oxford, Scottish Power, and all the rest all offer a special EV tariff. During the day, it will charge you slightly more per unit, but at night, it will charge you a staggering amount less. So let's have a look at some real figures and a real utility company, and probably the most expensive. Let's pick British Gas. They offer a standard variable tariff of 26.25 pence per unit. But if you switch over to their EV power tariff, they'll charge you 30.7 during the day and switch the whole house over to a ridiculous 7.9 pence overnight. So now, if you only charge at night during those five cheap hours, you're filling your EV up at 7.9 pence per, per unit. And that's really cheap. It's about 2p a mile. Now, before that peak rate of 30.7 pence puts you off, let's suppose that most of your electricity is used during the day at peak rates and only a small amount tops up your EV at night. We'll estimate 75% is peak, 25% is off peak. Now, averaged out over the year for every 100 units of electricity you buy, the average price will be 25 pence, not the standard tariff of 26.25 pence. You save money just by switching your tariff. However, there's another trick we can use. You see, if we have electricity five hours uh, free, every, uh, five hours cheap every night, why not use it? All modern white goods have timers specifically for this. Just program your washing machine, tumble dryer, and dishwasher to operate during those five cheap hours and you save even more. More of your units will be charged at the 7.9 and less at the 30.7. The whole house gains. By telling your car to only charge during those off-peak hours, you're buying your fuel at the lowest possible price and over a year this can save you loads. It fundamentally changes the economics of driving an EV, but none of that means a thing if we're not charging safely. So tip number three, it's a big one that most people overlook. You're plugging a two-ton vehicle with a massive battery into the same socket you might use for a toaster. Now, it's fair to be a little bit anxious about that. The weak link here isn't your car or your charger that came with it. It's almost always that little socket on the wall. An EV pulls a heavy, continuous stream of power for several hours, which is a marathon compared to the short sprint of a microwave or a kettle operating for a few minutes. Now, using an old, worn out or poorly installed socket can be a serious fire risk. So this tip, non-negotiable. Before you even plug in, take a look at the socket you plan to use. Seriously, does it look cracked, discoloured, or is it like, a bit like it's melted? When you plug something in, does it feel loose and wobbly, or does it grip the plug tightly? If you see any damage, or it feels loose, or there's burn marks on it, do not use it for your car. Now, while the level one charger that came with your EV is downrated from its maximum to ensure safety, you should still use a dedicated circuit. That just means that the EV charger is plugged into its own circuit and protected by its own RCB or trip. 
Don't worry about the terms because for this section, I'm not going to tell you, go and get an electrician. Yeah, right now, whatever you think you have, whatever you need, whatever knowledge you have, go and get a professional electrician. Well, the least you should do is get an electrician to, electrician to check the socket you intend to use. Might look fine, get it checked and have that circuit and the rest of the house tested. Needs to be tested for regulation compliance and for safety. You're plugging in a 30 or 40 thousand pound car. Surely it's worth about 100 quid to make sure it doesn't go up in smoke or worse still, you and your family don't go up in smoke. Get it checked and if anything needs doing, get it done. That may involve installing a dedicated circuit specifically for your EV or just upgrading your socket to a safer socket designed for charging EVs. Get an electrician. And please hear me on that. Never, ever, ever use a standard coiled up extension lead from your local DIY store to charge your car. Never, ever. They just aren't built for that. They aren't able to take that kind of sustained power and they can easily overheat and cause a fire. If you absolutely have to use an extension cord, it must be a heavy duty cord specifically rated for that load on a continuous basis and it must be rolled out fully, not rolled up. They're rare and expensive and critical if you need one, but the golden rule is to just avoid them. So we found our electrics are safe and suitable to use for your new EV, but stop and think for a moment, is this really the best socket to use? See, is it really the best thing to do, to open your kitchen window and push your charger plug outside? Do you want to leave your kitchen window open overnight? For most people, they will find they need a new socket in some sort of location. Now, now might be the time, while you've got an electrician, to shuffle things around or install new things to make your life with your EV even easier. This tip here is all about saving yourself a future headache. Well, some car makers seem to be in a secret competition to see who can put the charging port in the most random place. Some are driver side front or rear, passenger side front or rear, some are in the bonnet. If you have the socket installed in the wrong place, you face having cables trailing across lawns or paths. The solution is to think how you park and try to get your socket installed as close to the EV charging port as possible. If you always park on your drive, your socket will also need to be an exterior weatherproof socket designed specifically for EVs. Surprisingly, these are little dearer than an ordinary garden weatherproof socket. The chargers themselves will already be fully waterproof. If you park your car in your garage overnight, then a standard socket designed for EVs will be fine. And once again, these EV specific sockets, they're very similar in price to standard house sockets. And moving on to tip five, we've covered starting simple and cheap, being smart about when you charge, staying safe and planning for the future. But what happens when life changes? Maybe you get a new job with a longer commute or you add a second EV to your family. Suddenly that slow and steady level one charger might not be enough anymore. We don't want to be fighting over who needs their either EV the most tomorrow. Tip five looks at your next step if your level one charger cannot cope. So at some point you simply need more speed. This is where you graduate to level two charging. But the world of level two charging will be tackled really simply if you've lived with a level one charger for some time. You know it all. There are a few secrets left. So let's see your options. First, what's level two? Well, it uses 230 volts, exactly the same as your other one. There's no difference there, but it has to be connected to very much more powerful supply in your consumer unit. It has to have its own dedicated circuit and it has to be, has to be installed by a qualified, experienced electrician. Unlike your Type 1 charger, which offers three, four, five miles an hour of charging speed, your full home charger will offer between 20 and 25 miles an hour. It's a massive step up in speed. No matter how big your battery is, it's usually fast enough to fully charge your EV from empty to full overnight. Most of the time, it'll even do it within the super cheap off-peak hours your utility company offers you. This is the why. 
it makes your EV life completely effortless. Well, first, because very few EVs need to charge every single night, it will make charging multiple EVs really easy. Just allow anyone with a priority long journey ahead of them, priority on the charger the night before. The other EVs can usually quite happy go several days without having to top up. Now, I'm not going to go into any lengthy explanations of EV 7 kilowatt home chargers for the simple reason that your electrician will have experience of several and probably will favour one brand or model. Unless you have really strong reasons, just go with the flow. They will know all about that model and more importantly, they'll know any faults it may exhibit. The main choice you will need to make is tethered or untethered. And that simply means, is the cable and the plug permanently attached to the charger or is it detachable? For simplicity, ease of use, choose tethered, permanently attached. Nothing could be simpler. Only in areas where vandalism or theft is likely should you opt for untethered. It will be more hassle, but if the cable is safely stored in your boot all day long, nobody's likely to steal it. So just a couple of final points. If you plug your EV into any charger and lock the car, the plug will be locked into your charging port. It cannot be removed. So you're not going to come down and find your car battery flat and the cable on the floor because some kid out of spite has walked past and unplugged it. Can't happen. And finally, get an electrician. No, not just for installing stuff in the first place, but get a regular checkup. You're going to be plugging in, unplugging on a regular basis. Your plug might drop to the floor and crack or land in a puddle. The cable could be run over accidentally. Ask your electrician what intervals they recommend, but get your system, your house circuit, all your plugs and sockets checked on a regular basis. There you have it. Five tips to take you from a confused new owner to a total pro at home charging. As you can see, this doesn't have to be complicated or break the bank. If you remember just one message, let it be this. Start simple, stay safe, and only spend money to upgrade when you actually have to. But check your boot first. You may already have all you need right there. You've already made the upgrade to an EV. Now all you have to do is make living with it easy, cheap and rewarding. And if this guide helped you out, do me a huge favour and hit that subscribe button. We're always putting out new content to demystify the world of EVs, from road trip guides to explaining all the new tech. Thanks for watching and happy charging. I'm Dave. Mm -hmm.